So this is me. My name is Melinda Holt. I am an OTAN trainer, PS2 technology integration. Woohoo! I am a Google certified educator, level one, two trainer, plus some years. That's why I get that little circle T. I'm also a Google administrator. I know Google. Okay, I know Google. So um, if you have any Google questions, by the way, don't ask them here. Just ask about classroom. <laughs> but you can send me an email and leave my email address up there just for a second. mholt at scoe.net or mholt at otan.us. They're both good. They go to the same box. So you can always ask questions about Google by using those or you can go to support at otan.us. This is usually a hands-on workshop. And what we've done is we've kind of condensed it and reorganized a little bit to be a webinar so that you could all come here and learn about Classroom. Uh, we're not going to have a sign in. I am going to show you how to use this handout and you will get your own copy of it. And then we're going to do a little overview of the classroom and then go right into how to set up a Google class. Okay, we'll get as far as we can. We're probably going to run a little long, so I'm just warning you ahead of time. So here are the learning objectives we have. We want you to understand the connection of Classroom to Drive. We want you to learn the layout of Classroom. We want you to know the basic features of a class. Part two would be the understanding class setup, including assignments. And actually, that's partly part one as well. So it's kind of like fading into that and then fading out into part two right here where it says understand. Okay. Um, Debbie's going to be going in more to the assigning and grading. Uh, we'll try and explore the student side on both sides. Debbie's also going to be doing a lot more as far as how to do assignments, forms, quizzes, all kinds of things. We will answer questions. So ans ask your questions in the Q&A, and we have people monitoring that. They'll either text you the answer, or they will interrupt me, no problem, and ask me. My goal, and I'm pretty sure Debbie's goal for this, is that you're comfortable enough with Classroom to use it. Not even comfortable enough to just think about it, but comfortable, comfortable enough to use it as a learning platform in your, uh, in your class, in your program. Um, I would love to know what your goals are, but we just don't have time. So keep that, keep that thought, all your goals for this. Here's how to use this handout. This is a, an ebook. It's actually a slides presentation that I created as an ebook so that there are a lot of links within it. Right here, you see this little TOC, and you've probably been seeing it for quite a few slides up in the right hand corner. Every time you click that, it will take you to a table of contents. Within the table of contents are links that go to specific areas of this handout. This handout has a lot of slides. So instead of you going forward, 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 forward to find that slide, there is a table of contents, which is right here. So every one of these is a link. So if I want to know how to use this handout, I click there. And there I'm taken right to that page. I click back on the TOC, and it comes back to the table of contents where I can, I can select what my next subject is going to be. Okay, you could also, if you want to, use the, uh, the arrow key or the space bar to just go through the next pages. Okay, so that's how to use this handout. Here we go. What is Google Classroom? It's a blended learning platform. It's also turning into more of an LMS. LMS is Learning Management System. BLP is a blended learning platform. Why do they use, why does Google call itself a blended learning platform? Because Google Classroom is blending with Google. Everything Google. So I'm going to use this pointer right here. You see that? All of this is connected to this. So Google Classroom is actually built on the back of Drive. And it includes calendars, and it includes Gmail, and all of the other Google tools. Okay, um, Google Classroom is always changing, and Debbie can attest to this. She'll be in the middle of a work or a, a, a class, and she'll come back the next day, and she's got a new button that she never saw before, <laughs> or or the the colors change, or something else has been added. So you need to be on your toes when you're using the Google. 
um, apps and applications will change all the time. Next up, who can use Google Classroom? Anyone with a Google account. Yes, you need to have a Google account, but there's ways to do that. There's ways to do that. First, let's go over the type of accounts. There are actually two types. There's a club account and there's the pub account. And for those of you that know me, you know I'm about to break into my Irish. And for those of you that, that have the, uh, the accent by birth, I'm sorry, I don't, I'm just faking it here. <laughs> and I apologize if, if, if I'm stepping on anybody's toes. But when you've got the pub, when you've got the pub, you're actually on the public Google. Pub is short for public, right? So when you're in the pub, you can do anything you want. You can share it with anybody you want. Everybody's happy and together and all doing it together. Boom, you're in the pub, all right? When you're in the club, and you notice the accent has changed just a wee bit, but you've got to be quite proper. You come in and you have to hold your teacup a certain way. And sometimes the teacher gets a different looking cup than the student. And the reason that is, is well, it's not that they have anything added to their tea, although you know, they might on their own, but they get extra. They get that extra big cup because they can go to the top floor, all right? When you're a student, you're, you're actually stuck on the ground floor. And for the wee tots, the little guys, they're actually in the basement, which sounds rather harsh, but it's okay. It's a very nice basement. It's been well furnished with desks and everything. Here's, the pro here's what they're protecting. They're protecting the wee tots. They don't want anybody looking in. There's no windows down in the basement and they don't want the students looking out. All right, so those are the restrictions of the classroom. And adult education students, sometimes they're not even allowed into the club, which we have here in California. We, uh, there are a lot of sites that use Google. Their teachers are all club accounts, but their students have to remain in the pub. And that sometimes creates sharing problems. So to mitigate that, <laughs> you can, as an adult ed teacher, you could create a public account and share with your public students. There is absolutely no problem with that. If you're gonna do that, however, I would get a sign off from your administrator. Um, because sometimes the club accounts they will allow you to share with the pub and sometimes they don't and getting them to share it, it takes an act of congress which we know is well <clears throat> i'm not going to go there so it just takes a lot of of doing okay so um i i get this question all the time well how am i supposed to share it with my students if if I can't share the classroom because I'm on my club. And my first answer is, well, create a pub account. So, which lends me to the next thing, because I've told you right at the get-go that you need to have a Google account, right? And you're like, I don't have a Google account. Well, you can get one. I'm gonna leave the screen up just for a sec. Please write down that bit.ly address, bit.ly slash capital C. Create capital G, Goo, capital A account. Create Goo account. Okay. Here's what you're, we're going to do. I'm going to stop sharing just for a minute because I'm going to go to that site. And if you missed it, don't worry about it. Oh, I should have done this. Sorry. Now I got to share again. Boom. Come on. There we go. All right. All right, so if your students are already on a club, then that's fine. But a lot of teachers, they're not. So what they need to do is go to, I'm gonna do it real quick for you here. Uh, here we go. They would go to accounts.google.com, right? And sorry, I'm trying to readjust my screens here. They go to accounts.google.com. Now you might have to exit full screen again. Wait just a sec. Um, right here, you can see 
I went to accounts.google.com and somebody showed up. All right, I want to create another account. So we're going to click on use another account. Okay, and then from here, well, I don't have a Gmail. So what am I supposed to do? You go to create an account. All of this, that bit.ly that I had you create, this is all explained. That's a worksheet or a slide deck that you can print out and hand to your students or send to your students. Okay, so right here. Who to? Winky. Yes, who to Winky. And I'm going to use my current email instead. So this is the important thing right here. And watch what I do. Who to Winky at yahoo.com. Okay, I'm using my Yahoo account instead of creating a new Google account. Now, I always suggest to students and to teachers to suggest to their students, when you create your password for this new Google account, make it the same as your email that you're putting in so you don't forget it. And then hit next. Oh, ah. Uh. I typed it in one, I didn't type in the other. Like that, okay, now, what happens is that it sends that Yahoo address a code. So Winky has to go to their email address and check their folder, and I just happen to have Hutu open over here. And I'm going to check my mail. And there's my Google. Here's my verification. Okay, so I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go back to the Google. I'm going to type in the verification code and I'm going to verify. Now I can complete the registration. Uh, they don't have to put in their phone number. I suggest they don't. They will have to put in their birth date. Um, so you're all about to see my birth date here. Yes, I'm old. And next. Oh, select your junior. You don't even have to do this. Rather not say you could do that if you wanted to. Um, some students are worried about giving out too, too much information. So they don't have to put in their phone number. They don't have to put in their gender. And look at that. I have a Google account now with my Yahoo. And when I click on my little Google icon here, my avatar, I can see that I'm signed in with WinkyHutu at Yahoo.com. This means I can go to Classroom now. Okay. One of the, and all of these apps are available. This one will not be available. Gmail will not be available. Winky Hutu can click on it and they'll be prompted to set up another Google answer uh, or another Google answer. I'm, I was reading, I was reading the question and answer area. Um, they'll be prompted to um, actually create another Google account. So don't do that. They tell them not to use Gmail. So now, boom, I can, as a teacher, invite my student to my Google class on the pub. Did that, does anybody have any questions with that so far? Because right here, I'm gonna go ahead and show you this. It's really simple to do, it's step by step. If they don't have a Gmail account at all. It's the same, well, it's basically the same. Oh, look at that. Oh, because I forgot to be. It's basically the same. I saw the question. How do they, um, are, are there instructions? So these are the instructions on, um, here we go. So they have to look at their email address. If it's not, doesn't end in gmail.com, then they would open a browser and it's just what I did. If they already have a Gmail, then they're ready to go. They don't have to do anything, okay? This is not how to set up a classroom account. This is how to set up a preset. Okay, so everybody needs to have a Google account right off, right off the bat. If you have a Yahoo account and you don't want to have a Gmail, you can actually do the same thing as a teacher and then you're able to 
create a class using your Yahoo account. Okay, so here's the thing. This is something that you're going to have to fuss and discuss with your students somehow. Um, if they don't have a computer, it's okay because Classroom will work on a phone or a tablet. They will, there's an app and they will still have to uh, enroll themselves. They, what they do is accept an invite, which I'm getting ahead of myself on that one, but they can still use it. So the, um, and we've answered these live. So yes, this is something that they would do prior to um, either accessing Classroom through the app or through a computer, or it would be something that you would do prior to creating your classes. If you don't have a Google, if you don't have a gmail.com, you don't need one. You should have one, but you don't need one. <laughs> um, you can actually create an account using your Yahoo, your Hotmail, whatever you, whatever you want. Um, the create Goo account is shared. And uh, any, anybody that comes here with, the, with that link that I gave you, we've got quite a few people here right now. You can actually go to file, make a copy, and just copy the entire presentation, okay? Then you can do whatever you want with it. It's yours to use, lose, or abuse any way you want. All righty. Debbie, are we ready to go? Do we have any other questions anywhere? You have I think we're okay. Where I'm busy answering them. So okay. you're fine. Keep cool. going. Cool. All right. So back to the handout. We did this. Uh, boom, boom, boom. So why are you going to use Classroom? Because I don't know if you can see the notes down here. I'm not going to present right now because I'm going to go real fast through these next slides. Classroom passes. It's portable. It's accessible. It's secure. It's stable. It's easy. And it's simple. And not only that, but you can use it as a remote learning platform to stay connected to your students, which is really, really important right now for everybody. We want you to stay connected to your students. And this is one way to do that through Google Classroom. When you're using Google Classroom, you need to understand that, and I am going to present this, you need to understand that there is a relation with Drive. When you, when you create a new class, and we are going to do this, but when you create a new class, you have instantly, Google does it for you, a folder that is created. Every time you create a new class, a new folder is created for you in your drive. As soon as a student accepts an invitation from a teacher, a folder appears for them as well. When they view an assignment or submit an assignment, everything is put into this folder that is in your drive. You can create new assignments in the drive and then upload them or connect them to the classroom. You can drag things into your drive like Word docs or uh, spreadsheets, whatever you want. Drive is just a container. And after you have it in one of these folders, you can connect it to your classroom because there's a relationship there. Okay? You have to understand that everything that you're doing in classroom is actually being put in Drive. This is just a nice little interface for everybody to do, and it's got grading in it. There's more bells and whistles in the classroom than there are in Drive, but Drive is the main container. Okay? Moving on, here we go. So if you are following along, Melissa, Melinda, I have yes, a question. You bet. Do our student, or do our teachers have permission to use the the thing you did, the Create Goo account? Can they use that with their students? Absolutely. Yes. Everything that OTAN creates is for you. So um, use, lose, or abuse any part of anything that we share with you. It's up to you how you do that. Everything is Creative Commons, and I think, yeah, on that last on the, uh, the uh, Create Goo, um, I, I didn't have time. <laughs> I didn't have time to put the Creative Commons on it, but I'm giving you verbal Creative Commons right now. And if you wanna wait um, a day before you download it, I will, I will put that Creative Commons permissions on it. Apologies. We should, we're just moving fast and furious here. Uh, so Google Classroom, here is 
what you will do and what a student will do if they've never used classroom before what they do they go to classroom.google.com and they'll be prompted to sign in now if they use their winky hutu at yahoo.com they have to sign in with that okay if they're already signed into google they don't have to sign in again but it might prompt them to choose the account okay uh, the next step is usually to choose a role this is especially important if you're on a club. If you're in an EDU, if your email address ends with something like at scoey.net, at vpace.k12.ca.us, anything like that, then you need to make sure that you and your students choose the right role. This is really hard for adult learners because they don't look at these words down here. I am a student, I am a teacher. They look at the profile that's given them. And if it looks like an adult, they will choose the adult. So many times I've heard that um, adult learners, they, they need to understand which role they're going to be because if they select teacher in a club, um, they aren't allowed to join your class, okay? If you select student, because you like the little ball cap there, you aren't allowed to create a class. So make sure you choose the right role if you're prompted to do that. I don't think they do this on the pub anymore. They used to. Um, I think this is strictly a club selection. So if you mistakenly choose student and you want to be a teacher, you're going to have to call your network administrator so that they can change your role for you. Creating a class, very simple. Now here's where during a presentation, like at a conference or something, I would just go through these slides. I don't wanna do that. I want you to see it in action. So I'm going to escape out of this. If you have this in preview mode, because I don't think I explained this, you are gonna see the uh, slides that I am actually talking through, okay? You can go through them, you cannot make a copy of these yet. If you stay to the end of the workshop, I'll give you another link where you can actually um, download the presentation. Okay, that'll give you something to work with on the weekend. Alrighty, here we go. If you go to classroom.google.com, you will not see a screen like this because I've already created classes. So, what you will see is it might be something to sign in it might be a choose your role so go ahead and do that and then you will see a plus sign up in the top right hand corner click that and hit create class usually there's a question right about now can i join a class absolutely and this is exactly what you would select if a teacher creates a class and then gives you the link so that you can be a co-teacher, okay? Or so that you can be a student in that teacher's class. So yes, teachers can be students and teachers can be co-teachers. So you would, either way, you would use the join class link. So I'm gonna hit create a class. Using classroom at school with students? Oh my gosh! If you're doing that, you should do your, with your Google uh, Club account, your G Suites. Um, don't worry about this. If you have to use your pub because your students aren't on the club, then this is just a big scary message to cover Google. Google Classroom is free. And class is, is a, a container that you're going to put students in. Okay, class is a container that you're going to put students in. So I could have a Google class, I could have a history class, I could have an ESL1 class and an ESL2 class. I can have as many classes as I want. So I've just, I just read the, um, the Q&A. So this you're going to have to, I have read and understand the above notice. That comes up every once in a while. Um, sometimes you won't see it for a while, then all of a sudden it'll come up. So don't worry about it. So now we're going to create a class. We're going to name a class. And I'm going to name this OTAN Classroom Webinar. Okay. Uh, subjects. Eh, 
Google. Room, Zoom. Okay, you don't have to fill any of this out, by the way. You do need to have a class name. We'll give you a copy of the slides at the end. Okay, I'm going to hit create right now. Takes a little while. You might have to wait a little bit, like all of 30 seconds. Woohoo, there it is. That's very important to remember, folks. Be patient, especially right now. Be patient. Uh, we're not going to get click and get. Everybody's on the internet right now. We're all either working from home or there's a lot of people. Gaming is, is, <laughs> is most of the bandwidth is used right now. So be patient. Don't keep clicking on a button. Because what's going to happen is it's going to conk out or you're going to find later that you have 10 classrooms for every click that you clicked. Okay. So be patient. And there we are. We've got class OTAN classroom webinar. Our materials automatically placed in Google folder drive or manually. That's kind of up to you, Catherine. And we're going to go over that. Okay. Alrighty. So here is the basic layout of Google classroom. We have tabs at the top. We've got stream, classroom, people, and grades. Each one of these means different, something different. And each one of these, when you click on them, bring up a different area of the classroom. People are teachers and students. So when we add a teacher, this is you're adding a co-teacher. I'm going to type in the name here and hit invite. So Debbie will now have an invitation to this classroom. When she clicks on it, Google knows that I've invited Debbie as a teacher. I could have typed Debbie's name down here when I add student names. And then when she comes into the classroom, she will be a student. Okay. Um, grades. We don't have anything to grade yet. If you've just created a classroom, you're wondering, well, where are all my grades? You don't have any assignments yet, okay? If you don't have an assignment, you don't have anything to grade. So we will cover this briefly. Uh, Debbie will go be going over this area much more on Monday. The stream is where everybody lands. This is going to be a very long list of everything that you put in your classroom. Uh, you can organize it somewhat with um, organize. Well, you can organize it by dragging things on the student side or, or the teacher side. I'm sorry. You can drag it on the teacher side after creating things. Yes, I will show this to you. Uh, it, but it doesn't stay put. <laughs> right? it's, it's kind of it's kind of wonky the way the stream works. Um, Debbie, do you want to say anything to, about the stream? I'll take that as a no. She's busy answering questions. No, I thought I unmuted it and I was just talking away. Okay. Okay. The stream, everything you enter moves down. Then the new thing is on the top. Then the new thing, every assignment you make is thrown in the mix. So it's a mess. Now I tried for this summer because we are doing online classes to try communication with the students. But again, it keeps shoving down, shoving down, shoving down. Right. And so it's, tricky it's so yeah there you go it's wonky yeah yeah so there are ways to help with that wonkiness um which i will show you uh just some ideas but you might want to just think outside of the box because i know teachers like things very organized a b c d one two three four you might have to get used to two four six eight three five seven nine <laughs> okay so just kind of think outside of the box a little bit but like debbie was saying everything appears here on the stream, okay? As soon as we select or um, enter some assignments, you'll see some upcoming, so will the students. The students basically see the same thing you do on the classroom, on the classroom, okay? Uh, they don't see grades. Actually, they do see grades. Do they see grades? I'll have to think that one through. Uh, but they see everything you do. They, see okay? your, they do not see grades along the top. Thank you. Their, their grades are other places. Yeah, they used to, and then they took it away. So it's like <laughs> Google changes, folks. Um, right here, the, the drop down, I can select it to see the subject and the room. Eh, 
so what? Um, over to the side, we've got select a theme. This is a nice, pretty blue thing. I, it's nice, but if I don't like that, I can select my own, okay? Uh, maybe this class has more to do with graduation, or maybe I want people, it's more in line with getting their citizenship. Maybe this picture works better for me. I would select that one, whatever you select. There, and there's also a bunch of categories. These are very simple uh, little themes that, you know, you don't have to use any of them, actually. You could, I'm going to mark this, here we go. I'm gonna go back to the, where the class stream is at and then upload a photo. And I can upload from my computer. So if you have your own logo that you wanna use or your, you've got the, uh, the banner for your school, you could select it from here. They have some specifications for that. You know, go to the help button to find out exactly what the banner size should be. Uh, students do not see this, the so select theme or upload photo, whatever you choose for your class, that's what appears for the students, okay? Uh, the class code is right here. Now that's really small, isn't it? So I'm going to hit display. <clears throat> so if I'm doing a uh, workshop remotely and my students say, teacher, I can't see it because my screen is so small, I will click that little class code display button. And if I want it even bigger, there's a full screen button right here. Boom. There we go. That'll knock your socks off, huh? So now everyone can see that code. All right. Um, and actually, nah, we're not going to do that. Okay. So right here is the exit full screen. Goes back here. And then I can mark this closed. Okay, now on also on this page, and uh, actually on any page, we're I'm going to click on classwork just to show you. There's the gear. I click on people. There's the gear. Click on grades. There's the gear. So the gear always stays with you. Okay, I'm going to click on that gear to show you. Remember when we were filling out the class name and the class description? I left blank. I could now add a class description. I could now add a section. I could change the room name if I wanted to. I can change any of this information here. As I change it on the class details or within the gear, uh, it will change for everybody. Okay, here's the class code. Hey, can I change my class code? No, because everybody would want ESL 1234 um, because it's really simple, right? Somebody else already has it. So Google decides what your code's going to be. And then when the code is no longer valid, it puts it back in the pool. If you have a club account and if you're able to share it with your students and they really want to use their Gmail, then yes, it will work as long as you can share your club account with, your, with a pub account. How do you test that ahead of time? You create a pub account. You invite your Gmail address. Okay, so Elizabeth, I'm, I'm answering your question, but I'm telling everybody, if you, um, if you have an at gmail.com account, great. Go in as a teacher and invite that account to, as a student, which is a really good thing to do anyway. That way you can see what the students are seeing. If the students are in the club already, do they need to have a Gmail? No, because they already have one in the club. Okay, the club is a Google. The club is an EDU. If your students have an EDU account, then they have a, cl a club account. If they really want to use their Gmail, you need to first see if they can, or if you can, share with those pub students. And instead of using a student as a test or as, as, as a guinea pig, use yourself. That way the student doesn't get upset or confused. Okay, so the class code, let's go back to the class code. You can display it right here. You can copy it, which all it does is copy it to your, your, your um, clipboard so that maybe you can paste it into an email later. Uh, you can also reset it, which just changes the number on it. There we go, different number, okay? 
Don't do that too many times because Google gets upset. I tried because um, I wanted to find something that was really cool and it said, okay, no more. <laughs> and I couldn't change the code again for another uh, week. I don't know if they still do that, but they get a little they get a little cranky if you change that code too often. You can also disable. So that means nobody else can come in. All right. So if, um, if I have a student that wants everybody in his family to come into your classroom and he, he gives them the code, now I'm, they can't do that. But it, um, I'm just giving you an example. There might be some reason you want to disable. Another reason to disable is just uh, the semester has ended. It's summertime, you don't want anybody working on anything, you don't want anybody doing anything in the classroom, then you can disable the class code, okay? If your district doesn't allow you to share docs forms with, the, your, um, with your students, then they would have to have a Gmail. So Jacqueline, I'm answering your question. Do students in the club account have to have Gmail addresses? Everyone has to have some form of a Google either a club or a pub. If your district does not allow you to share Google anything with your students, so I'm assuming that you're in a club and it won't let you share with your anybody out in the pub, then what you would need to do is create your own pub account. And while I'm on that topic, create something worthy of a teacher that your students will understand. Okay, so maybe uh, Teacher Cisneros or um, ESL teacher is going to be taken, I can guarantee you, but make the account name something professional. If you have a party girl at gmail.com, don't create anything that with your students using that email address. That's not a good idea. Okay. Melinda, we have yes. a question. Sure. Is there going to be the ability to get a copy of the Q and A um, discussion that we're having? Can they get Possibly, a copy of that? yeah. We as we're recording, it's also recording chat and it's record, recording the uh, the Q and A. So yes, we will. Um, whether or not we share that out, <clears throat> are you? It, it's the answers that people are wanting. We can right. probably do that as well. Okay, thank okay. you. I'm so jumping I into, Sorry. Excuse me. Um, I'm going to jump into. Someone else is asking if you can make your screen full screen or if you can zoom in so they can see better. Please. Oh, okay. Thank you. Sure. Okay. I'm, I'm going to do a little more. There we go. So here we go. Um, just to reiterate, because I've, I've gotten off topic a little bit, I'm going to close class settings. Class settings is in the gear, and that follows you with any tab. I'm going to click on the class gear. I'm going to scroll down here, the class details. I can change those. When you disable a code, you get a new one when you enable it. So I can disable or I can enable, okay? Right here, the stream. Can, do you want students to be able to post and comment? If you're going to, a stream also allows you to have discussions and polls with your student. Does Google Classroom run on Zoom? We're doing it right now. Um, so as you might wanna think this through. Um, you were working with adults, so it, this shouldn't be a problem, but if you notice maybe there's some bullying going on, yes, even adults do dumb stuff, um, you might want to say students can only comment, they can't create their own posts, okay? Or you might want to say only teachers can post or comment. Now, if I was working, uh, one of my old gigs was juvenile court schools, this would definitely be what I would select, all right? Only teachers can post or comment. But this setting right here, students can post and comment, allows the students to post new conversations and to comment with each other. So you get a little discussion going on, which is not a bad thing, but keep an eye on it. Uh, you can get notifications, okay? Notifications can show attachments and details, or you can hide those notifications on the class stream. You can show deleted items. Only teachers can view deleted items. So if I turn this setting on, all that means is when I create something and then delete it, only I will see it on the stream when this button is on. Only I will see it. Do I want to see the deleted items? I might want to, because I might want to remember, why did I delete it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you might want to leave that on. Uh, yeah, I'm going to leave it on. 
grade calculation. Debbie's going to go over this more. I did want to show you where it's at. So on Monday, we'll go more over on grades. You can uh, overall grade calculation. So there might not be one, or you might want to go with points, or you might want to go weighted by category. Uh, show overall grade to student. That's an on and off button. And you can also add categories, grade categories. I am not going to go over this, but I am going to show you where it's at. So you can play with it on the weekend and then come back Monday with questions. All right, so this is the gear settings or the class settings. This only affects this class, not classroom. Classroom is the big umbrella that holds all of your classes. So think of it as the, uh, the house, okay? The house that has many rooms within it, okay? And or many classes within it. Classroom is the house and there are many classes within it. After you make changes on this page, and even if you don't, it's a good idea to click the save button because unless you do that, it's not going to save your changes. And then it takes you back to your stream. Okay, so I'm back at the stream. Um, we've gone over the title is right here. If I click on it, nothing happens. Yeah, nothing happens. <laughs> okay, I wanted to make sure. All right, next to the title of the class, we have what Google calls the hamburger. This actually just takes us to a menu, okay? So you can call it the hamburger if you want, um, but it, it's, it's, it's just the menu, okay? When I click on classes from the menu, I go back to that that house that I was talking about. This is your classroom dashboard. This is where all of your classes are listed. So here's that new class that I just created. I have zero students in it, okay? Here's another class that I have 12 students. Here's another class that I have one student. And here is a class that has been shared with me by my alter ego on the club. This is a club account and I'm a co-teacher using my pub address. Okay, Debbie's class is at 10 o'clock on Monday. Um, when we, let's see, I'm going to go back to this menu here. And when we create events, we'll be able to see the calendar. We're going to create an assignment so I can see what, what's to do. Uh, you can also click on the settings button down at the bottom. You might want to do this because every class will be set to send out notifications. I just answered an email from somebody yesterday, and she might be here. Um, she was getting so many emails because everybody was using their classes and she's a co-teacher. Uh, I think she's the vice principal. And she was getting email notifications from every class that she's a co-teacher at. So she turned this off. And that means she's not getting any email notifications from anybody. Does the, oh my gosh, she just changed it for everybody. No, all it means is she's changed it for herself. Students have the right to also turn off email notifications or turn them on. You can also kind of limit, maybe you're getting a lot of comments on your post. You just want to not get so many notifications on that. Just turn it off, okay? So you have the, all these little categories on notifications and way down at the bottom, at the very bottom, we have class notifications. So I'm gonna select the arrow, the drop down arrow for class notifications. And here I can turn off specific classes, okay? I turned off class for pub because I was getting so many notifications from that. I wasn't, but let's pretend I was getting so many notifications that was driving me to drink. And that means every notification comes to your email, okay? So if I turn them back on, I'll start getting notifications for class for pub. Can you set up a trial class and delete it? Absolutely. So I'm going to go back to the settings. We're kind of getting a little off the topic here, but um, you go to archive classes. Okay. So after you archive a class, then you can delete it. Google wants you to go through that next step. So if you to archive a class. Here's a class that I was um, asked to be a co-teacher on. You can also move it. I can, oh, by the way, yes, I'm, I'm so glad I clicked on that button. So this is a class that I created. I can move it back into my classroom area. I could copy it 
I could restore it. It just goes back where it was, or I can delete it because I own this. Okay. This class, I can move it. I can't delete it because it's not my class. And Debbie would probably kill me if I did. So I can move this back to the beginning. Okay. Um, back into my class. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, it's not letting me move back into the... <gasps> Ooh, I'm going to have to talk to Google. So all that did was move it to the end. Okay, I just found a glitch, folks. That's part of um, being a Google trainer, by the way. We find things and we have to send it in. So I should be able to move this back or unarchive it, and it's not letting me do that. So I'll have to check on that one. Um, Make folders for each area of what you're teaching. Yes, it will make folders. So um, if you want, by the way, we just, let me go back to classes. This is my classroom dashboard. Remember, I just created this class, okay? So I'm gonna go to Drive using my Waffle or the Google Apps icon. I'm gonna go to Drive. You're gonna see a mess in a minute. And Within my classroom folder, which Google created for me, here is OTAN Classroom Webinar. That is the folder that was created when I created the class. So if I wanted to right now, I could move things, maybe files or folders into this area right now. Okay, I could also leave them exactly where they're at. It's okay but you can create anything that you want and put it into this folder. It belongs to you. Does it automatically attach itself to your classroom when you do that? So if I put a, a file here, would it automatically appear in my classroom? No, you have to tell the classroom that you want it, okay? You have to tell that classroom, hey, I want this in there. So let's do that next. Uh, I'm going to go, let's, yeah, let's just create, I'm going to create a new doc and it's, yeah, see, oh, this is a shared folder. Everything that you create in a Google Classroom is shared. So I'm going to create a new doc called, come on, la, 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 here we go, syllabus. Everyone needs a syllabus, right? stuff to remember. Okay. There's my file. Boom. Come on. There it is. <laughs> All right. So I was in this folder. I created something called syllabus. Now I'm going to go back to my class. I'm going to open Google Classroom. Here's O10 class. All right. I'm going to show you how to create one assignment. One assignment. Quincy's question is, uh, I don't know what Qu Quincy's question is because I didn't see it. Debbie, could you read me Quin Quincy's question or did you already answer it? And you might I muted. don't know. Quincy's question is key. We are only teaching online now. Schools are closed. Oh, uh, I could have answered it. The question was asked, can you use Google Classroom for complete online instruction? That's what I'm using right now. Now I do get with my students in some kind of a hangout or a Zoom or something so that you know we can chat and that kind of stuff. But you can use your Google Classroom online. It this is, yes, absolutely. Because it's online. So you could actually have communications. You could uh, create a post and ask them a question and require them to answer. Uh, like Debbie was saying, we're actually doing Google Classroom right now in a Zoom. All right, so if you have a Zoom room and you want your students to come in, that's exactly what I'm doing right now. I'm teaching you how to use Google Classroom, but this could be a full-blown course or class, and we're talking about it, or I'm showing you something on it. So yes, absolutely. We wouldn't be showing this to you if you couldn't use it remotely. Should I create a Google Class for myself and my students? Well, create one for yourself, sure and then invite your students to it. We haven't gotten to the invite part yet. Let me, um, let me create a, a, an assignment and then we'll go back to invitation, okay? So I'm gonna go to classwork. 
here is where you're going to create assignments and questions. You are going to create some topics and we're going to order the way we want students to see what is on the stream. This is not the stream. This is not the stream, okay? This is where you create things that appear on the stream. Students see it differently. They're not able to create things here. They're able to click on something and then, um, or click on an assignment and then, and then turn in the work, okay? Is the code case sensitive? Absolutely, all codes are case sensitive. Um, right here, I'm going to, let's just create something called a, I'm going to create a material, right? Because I want it to be the syllabus. And I'm going to add, using this attachment right here, from the Google Drive, And usually it's last opened first at the top right here. So this is the last thing I created. So it's right up at the top. If it wasn't at the top, I could search for it. Here's a search button right here. So there's the syllabus that I just created and I'm going to add. And there it is attached to this assignment. Okay, I could add a description. Read this, no. Okay, um, I can also at this time, I can put this document or this file or whatever this is, it doesn't just have to be the syllabus, I could add it to all of my classes at the same time. We're going to get into the invitation here in just a second. So here, I'm just going to leave it in this class and I want all students to see it, but if I had students, they would all be listed here and I could select just that specific student, okay? Um, then, see, I'm, I'm zoomed in a little bit, so I have to come out just a sec, there we go. After we do that, after you get everything the way you want it, you hit post, but wait, before you do that, there's an arrow next to post, so let's click on that to see what it says. It says post, it says schedule, so I can pre, uh, I can preload my class, right? I can get all my assignments in there and then schedule them at a certain date and even a certain time, okay? So if I set this for today at three o'clock p.m., this assignment would not appear until three o'clock p.m. All right, that's, it's up to the teacher when things appear on the classroom. I can also save it as a draft. That means I'm not really sure, I wanna work on it a little more, but I want it here, I want it connected. All right, so I could save as draft right now. If I'm good with what I know that this, this is all the information I want them to have, it's just this file, then I would just click the post button. And give it a second, there we go. Now, here we go, adding a topic. Use topics to organize classwork into modules or units. This is so key to keeping that wonky stream. Um, it, it's kind of unwonkifying it, okay? <laughs> because we're gonna, when we add a topic, they appear for the students. So if they wanna see all of the vocabulary assignments, they can click on vocabulary and that's just what they see. They, yes, your students have to have a Gmail of some sort. They have to have, a, and, it could be their Yahoo if they create a Google account. Is there a way to create a discussion forum area specific to a topic? Probably. We need to think about that a little bit. Right now, I'm going to say I've got it here, and I am going to create a topic. And I'm going to create a topic called materials, or maybe even class materials. Okay, and I'm going to add it. So I have a class materials topic now, and this syllabus isn't within a topic yet. Number one, I didn't have any. So I'm gonna edit this. And here, I'm going to select class materials and save. So that when students come to their class work page and they click class materials, that's all that's gonna show up or everything that 
is within the class materials topic will show up here. Okay. Testing is on going to be on Monday and making sure that they don't cheat. That could be something of a password related issue that we can do. Okay. Um, Sandra, we'll get back to you on that one. So I created a topic um, and I created a lesson. When I go back to the stream, there it is because I posted it. And this is what my students will see. Now, as Debbie was saying earlier, the minute I add another assignment, it goes on top here. You can rearrange things um, through the classwork area and that will also show whatever you decide how things are arranged, that's how it will be arranged for your students. Um, but you have to keep going in and redoing it and redoing it and redoing it. So the topics, when you go here, click on a topic, it makes much more sense to you and to the students as well. People have been asking about invites. So we're going to go over that. Right now I have one teacher invited. Uh, she has not accepted my invitation because she's been busy answering questions. So I'm going to add a student. And Marjorie, I hope you're listening. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. I'm going to add somebody that I know has a Google account. Oh, I can't invite anybody from an EDU. Oh my goodness. Actually, I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> Here's the thing, if your students are on an EDU um, and you're not, you can't invite them. You have to be on the same EDU as they are, okay? So let's say they're going to classes at a community college and they're using that club, that EDU account. And they're also taking classes from you at another agency. You have to have the same at whatever, .net or ed.edu.org. You have to have the same domain as they do. If you don't, then you have to use Gmail. You have to use Google. So I'm going to cancel this and I'm going to invite who to winky at yahoo.com. But Yahoo isn't a Gmail. Yes, it is. Remember when I went and created that account? I created the account and I used my Yahoo address, my current email address, instead of creating a Google. When I created that account, I created it with my Yahoo. Okay. That is a Google account. It just doesn't have Gmail. That's all. So I'm going to invite Winky Hutu or Hutu Winky. Okay. Hutu Winky has been invited. There's somebody else out there that I know. Blink a Binky at gmail.com. There's old Blinka Binky. Okay. Hit enter. And then that person will also, what's happening right now is they're sending Gmail or the Google is sending an email to those two people. And within that is a link that will, when they click on it, will come to the classroom. Should you create your own Google Classroom? Um, I would stay with the teacher because she invited you for a reason. So maybe she wants you to help her co-teach, Antoinette. Um, but I was also create my own Google Classroom just to get an idea of how it works. And you might want to branch out and uh, have your students in, in your class as well. Melinda? Right. Yes. I don't send out invitations to my students because they do the same thing to me that I did to you. They ignore me. They ignore you. <laughs> And so I have them use the um, code. Okay. I send them a code in Remind, okay. and I have them do it that way. All um, right. Through, through Remind, is, I've had better luck that way. All right. Then, then we'll do it both ways. How's that? So I'm going to display this class code. Oh, my goodness. It is. Yuck. That's a. That's. That's. Ugh. I can't. I'm not going to change it, though, because I've already changed a couple of times. So if. You are using a Google Classroom. If you're actually following along right now, um, you could, let me walk you through it because it just dawned on me. I might, I might lose you if I do it that way. All right. So if you're on the class that you've already created and you're looking at the stream, okay, I want you to go over and click on the class settings 
that little hamburger that I was talking about next to your title, okay? And I want you to click on classes. All right. Now, I want you to click on the plus symbol on the far right hand side. And I want you to select join a class. And then after you do that, I just want you to hang tight. So I'm going to do that again. I'm going to you go to class settings, classes. Make sure you're on your class dashboard and then select this plus sign to create or join a class. Click join a class. And then it's going to ask you for the class code, which I'm about to show you in just a sec. Here is the class code. So this is how Debbie does it. This is how you can do it in Zoom or Hangouts or whatever video tool you're using. So we've got M27 W Q Q M. And it looks like everything is lowercase. How do you delete a class? While people are typing this in, how do you delete a class? You have to go to your class dashboard. You have to click on the more button, the little three dots up at the top of your class card, and then you archive it. And then you go to the class settings, you go to archive, and then you can delete it from the archive area. All right, I'm gonna give us a, a 10 count. So if you're following along, you wanted to go to your Google Classroom dashboard. You find the plus symbol on the far right hand side. You click on it. You're going to hit join a class. It's going to ask you for the class code. Here's the class code on the Zoom screen M27 W Q Q M. Melinda, we have a question. We have an answer. What you got? Can, can you confirm that once you create a Google class that it becomes the property of Google? Oh boy. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, everything you create in Microsoft is actually belongs to Microsoft. Everything you create in Google actually belongs to Google, but it doesn't. I have never had Google take anything from me, download anything from me, take um, or has used anything that um, I haven't wanted them to. Yes, we all sign acceptable use policies at the beginning. Google is FERPA, COPA, and SIPA certified, which means they, they're not supposed to share any information with anybody at any time, especially students. So they've signed something with the U.S. government saying, okay, we're never going to do that. Okay? So I wouldn't worry about it. Um, I've been using Google Classroom for God knows since Dirt was young, since it first came out actually, and I have never had a problem with information being taken. I've never gotten a wind of maybe all of a sudden email addresses are being, they're all of a sudden getting spams or something. I've never had any of that happen. Um, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. Okay. We have a second question. Sure. Um, question. Can you ask her how to put her, how she put her picture in the circle? I tried putting my picture in and it wanted to make it the entire triangle. This is my first time doing anything with Google Classroom. I'm a high school counselor, yet my supervisor suggested I take this training. Okay. The circle. I missed that. I put a circle in a triangle. I think you put your image in it. And she wants to be able to put her in. Oh, this guy right here? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, you actually want a presence. So that's through Google accounts. You can upload your picture. That's a whole nother workshop. Um, whoever asked that question, we're having office hours, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We can definitely show you how to do that. It's really simple. Um, so this little circle right here, some, if you see a, the letter C, A, B, C, D through Z, if you see a letter, that just means you haven't uploaded your photo yet. So it's taking the first letter from your name, okay? And if your name happens to be SCOE Tech, that would have been an S for me, <laughs> okay? You don't have to use your name when you create, a, create an account. All right, now, if anybody followed along and came into... Uh, my class. Well, look at this, all these people. Dark chocolate, good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Woot, woot. 
So we have a lot of people in here now, don't we? So I'm going to go to the People tab, and I'm going to show you all of the students. When they appeared grayed out, like blink -a binky that means they haven't accepted the invitation yet. So if I feel that blink -a binky is just not going to um, come into class, I can actually delete them from the class. Now, Winky Woohoo down here, I can go to the Winky Woohoo. I'm Winky Woohoo, and I'm I'm just gonna open my inbox, and look, I have a class invitation from my teacher. And here, as I scroll down, there's my teacher. There's my teacher because that's in the accounts. And then I'm gonna hit the join. Here we go. Oh boy. Okay, now Winky Woohoo would have, should have appeared in my list of, and I think what happened was it detected, yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, problem, I was opened in the same browser and Google already knows I'm signed in. So Winky Woohoo is probably signed in, but I'm not gonna see them because it opened in the same browser. That's a really uh, convoluted way, way of saying I, I messed up. So I should have opened up Winky Woohoo's account in another, um, another browser instead of in Chrome. So trust me, Winky Woohoo would have shown up if I had only been signed into one account, okay? Um, can't remember if you can put Google Class into a Google site. Can you put a Google Class into a Google site? You can link to a Google Classroom from the Google site. Can you see what students see in their windows? We could if I just used the right account. Hang on. Let me go to Safari. Sometimes you have to use two different browsers. There we go. Okay, and we're going to go to classroom. And some of you are actually seeing it as a student because you signed into the classroom. Google.com. So I go to classroom.google.com. I am signed into my Winky Woohoo account. And here's what they get. I'm going to continue. I'm going to join the class. Or I could go to my Yahoo again. And let's do that because I do want you to see what that email looks like again yahoo.com uh, oh man you should know who i am come on yeah it doesn't okay there we go do we have any questions while i'm fumbling here i'll take that as a note <laughs> okay, so here we go. Winky Hootoo is back again. Okay, here we go. Uh, da, 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 we have da, a da, question. Da. Yes. Um, she, has, she has troubles using Google Classroom with Zoom. Are there other platforms that she can use? There's Google Hangouts. You could use that. Um, oh, and they blocked me out. Uh, so yes you could definitely use the google classroom or um the the hangouts you could also use what webex uh marjorie help me out here what are some of the other platforms we can do video on while i find that code did marjorie go marjorie's probably doing support all right so i copied the code uh i i fumbled i fumbled it took away the email because i already opened it yahoo works differently so I'm going to go back to classroom. I'm going to do what you did. I'm going to hit the join button, join class. I'm going to put the class code here. I'm going to hit join. And remember, I'm in my Yahoo account. It takes a little bit of time. Here we go. This is what a student sees. So I can create a post because my teacher allowed it. If my teacher didn't allow it, I wouldn't be able to share anything. Got it. All right. I see classwork up at the top. Let me make this bigger. I see stream, classwork, and people. I can click on classwork, and there I see my teacher has posted class materials or syllabus, okay? Um, I'm gonna click on people. I can see all of my classmates, okay? And these are the names that are on their accounts, so that's why I see those. 
So this is what a, a, a student sees. When I click on the hamburger, they will have the calendar. As soon as I demo the calendar, they will have a to-do. As soon as we require something to be done, they also have their own settings. And here are the notifications for this class. Can they turn them off? Yes. Can you control that? No. They control their accounts. So if they tell you, teacher, I'm not getting any of your notifications, walk them through, go to the three bars on the far left, go to settings, make sure email is selected. Do teachers need a Zoom account to use Google? Absolutely not. They do not. Zoom is a, a, an entirely different product from Google. I'm using Zoom because OTAN has a Zoom and it's just easy to get this information out to you. All right, I'm gonna add some more classwork as a teacher. So I'm back here as a teacher. I know I'm the teacher because I see my little smiley face over there. Sometimes I do get confused when I have a student account open and a teacher account. How long will the info stay on the schedule? As long as you allow it to. We, we're gonna do that right now. I'm gonna hit assignment. I'm creating another assignment, just a very simple assignment. I'm going to title this simple assignment. <laughs> okay, instructions are optional. You, it's good to have instructions, especially for remote learners. Get, give them step-by-step step what you need to do or put it on the document. I'm going to create something right now. Look at that. So you can create a doc, a sheet, a slide, a drawing, a form, anything you want within, and because it's selected within this classroom, because you're creating it within this classroom, it's gonna go into that folder. Can you take attendance on Google Classroom? Yes, you can take attendance on a classroom using a form. It's really simple to set up and do, and that might be something that we can cover here in a little bit. Ah, you know what, let's just do it now. Instead of simple assignment, we're going to call this attendance. So for those of you that wanna be able to do attendance in a classroom, here's how you do it. I'm going to create a form. It's creating the form for me now. It opens the form for me now. I'm going to title this form attendance. And I might even call it class attendance. And I might even call it something class attendance or just make it attendance and you can use it for everybody. You can use it for all of your classes, okay? Um, there we go. And what's the first thing we need on attendance? Well, we probably need their name, don't we? Okay, and if I want to give a description, I can do that if I want their first name, last name. No, I'm not gonna show you how to do a form. This is not a forms workshop. <laughs> so we'll do that in, in the future, okay? So you want their name. You also, it, you're gonna want to require it, okay? What else do we want on a form? Well, you might want something that verifies this is who they say they are. So maybe email address. Do not enable email collection. Don't do it. J trust me, just don't do it. Uh, we're gonna require this. And what else do we need on attendance? I don't know, this is your attendance sheet, so you decide, okay? After that, I'm gonna hit send just for grins and giggles. I'm not actually going to send it to anybody. I just like having buttons to push, <laughs> okay? Uh, this opened in a new tab. I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to make this as big as I can. But up at the top of my screen, I see class attendance. That's the form I just created. And I see class for, classwork for OTAN Classroom. That is my Google Classroom. So I'm going to close this. Okay. Any minute now, this is going to refresh. It's not an untitled form. I know it's not untitled because I just titled it. Uh, by the way, do you see this? Woohoo! Rubrics! Yay! They were just added to Google Classroom on the pub, oh, I'm going to say about a month ago. Debbie might be able to go over that Monday. I'm kicking her to, <laughs> under the bus right now. <laughs> so it's I'd a maybe. Be, it's I'd, a maybe. Be glad, I'd be glad to. Oh, good. 
Oh, good. Now, are we going to give students points for filling out the attendance? Absolutely. Are you kidding me? At least 10. Okay. Is there a due date? No, there's no due date and there's no due time because this is going to be done every time they come to class. So don't put a due date because as soon as you do, let's say I put the due, oh yeah, I'm going to have class, uh, it's due today. Okay. If it's due today, then after today, it disappears. After today, it's just, it disappears. Canvas and Google are both considered LMS, um, but they are not the same. I think Google is a little simpler and a little easier to use. Those of you that use Canvas can disagree if you wish, not a problem, um, but this is a Google Classroom presentation. So don't put a due date on anything that you want to be always available, okay? Now, as far as topic is concerned, I'm gonna put this in class materials because I want them to be able to click on class materials and see it right away. I'm going to assign it right now. All right, and there we have attendance, okay? So what the students would do would be come here. Well, let's just do it. Um, those of you that are in the class, you might have to refresh because if you're in the classwork or the, the stream and I just put something there, you're kind of held in time. So refresh your screen a little and you should see class attendance on the stream or you can go to classwork and you'll see it there, which is actually easier to do. I always tell students, don't go to the stream, you know, look at the conversation if you want, but go to your classwork tab and then select the assignment there or select the topic so that you can find the assignment there. So yes, there's a little stuff. There's a little, um, what you have to show your students some things to do. All right, so okay, everybody, I want you to sign in um, to your Google Classroom and then, yeah, I'm gonna get my own winky hutu. Okay, go to your class. Okay, everyone click on classwork. Click on class materials. Now, I want everyone to select the class attendance and then type your name. Actually, I'm winky hutu, aren't I? Okay, and type in your email address. I can't type. <laughs> and submit. Okay, do I allow them to submit another response? No, I don't want them to do it more than once, but that's my bad as a teacher. I allowed that. So what I have to do now is go back to the form and make sure that that is not selected. Okay. Um, open assignment. There it is. So it takes me back into the classroom. It also opened up a bunch of tabs. So that might be something also that I need to just explain to my students that as you're doing this, oh, look at you, share, thank you. Um, you know, it's opening a bunch of tabs for me. Okay. Alrighty. So I've done it. Now, how does my teacher know that I did it? Because my teacher knows that this is in my drive. I'm back on my teacher hat, okay? Remember I told you everything that you do in a class is connected to your drive and I'm hovering my, my mouse, moving around because in your classwork, now that I have materials in my class, I have a class drive folder already created for me. If I don't wanna look at it right now, I don't have to. I can open up a new tab or I can go to my class drive folder at any time without opening up the classroom. I'm gonna hit the class drive folder. It's gonna open it right up. And look, there's the syllabus that I created while I was in drive. And here's the class attendance that I created while I was in classroom. And if I want to see the class attendance, I would open it up the form opens and here are the responses so i can see who signed in and if i want to look at it on a spreadsheet those of you that that have been saying asap and how do i get this into my attendance blah 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 this is magic right here for you so we're going to click on this icon we are not doing a forms workshop by the way i'm showing you real quick if you want to know more 
come to an office hours or we will do a, a forms workshop. I'm going to create this worksheet. It's going to open up for me. And now I have everyone's name and I have everyone's email address and anything else that I required them to input during um, attendance. I also get a time code. You guys didn't put date and time. I get that. So I know exactly if Alan came in and said, yeah, yeah, I signed in when I was supposed to. And the date here is 4-6 instead of 4-3. Okay. Alan, I just kicked you to the curb. Thank you. Thank you for playing. <laughs> okay. So that is how all of this information, see, and as soon as I create that, that worksheet, it's in my classroom folder. So everything is kind of organized for you as you're creating things within your class. So let's create another very simple assignment. Um, I'm going to create an assignment, then I'm going to create a, a, a post. So assignment, so simple assignment, because this is what I got sidetracked. A simple assignment. Hey, Melinda. Hello. We are at 11.30, just giving you a heads up. Okay, yeah, and I told everybody that we're going to run long, so I'm going to do, we're going to go longer. <laughs> if you want to stay, you can stay, okay? I'm going to create a doc. I'm going to, and you'll get an extra half an hour on your, uh, on your attendance as well. All right, so I'm creating this within Classroom. The first one I did um, was created within my drive. This is being created within Classroom. Type your name below, right? This is what I was trying to tell you. you know, simple instructions, because you are going remote. Type your name below. Bold your name, okay? Simple instructions, step by step. This is really, very, really simple, but I want you to see this. And now after I create it, notice it's already shared. I can close it. I should be able to close it. Okay. And oops. Here it is. Now it says untitled because the drive, this, the internet's slow. So, all right. So just, it will be fine. Right here is what I want you to see. Students can view file. Students can edit file. Make a copy for each student. You have to do this now. You have to do this now because if you don't select one of these, you're not able to go back for it. All right. I am going to revisit this. I am going to do this again. So what I did was I went to the classwork. I'm creating an assignment. I call it simple assignment. I click on the create button, right? Click that. I went to docs. I created a document called simple assignment. Okay. I closed that window after I created it. Okay. Um, and then I'm giving the option to allow students to view, to edit, or to make a copy. If you allow students to edit a file like what I just created, you're going to get stuff all over that document. So don't do it unless you've preset the document to where there's a table and you've assigned students a number. Okay, you get row one, you get row two, you get row three, you know, John gets row five, uh, Susie gets row six, Sh Sandra gets row seven, and so on. Because editing means they can write or type all over that um, that document. Students can view file, means they can just view it. They can only look at it. And that might be something that I wanted to do on the syllabus, right? I just want them to read it. I don't want them to change it. I just want them to read it. Make a copy for each student, means they have their own copy. They can't touch mine, but a copy is made in their folder and they can touch theirs. So I'm making a copy for each student. I'm going to make this 100 points. I'm going to make the due date tomorrow at 11.59 p.m. Yes, you can go that late if you wish. Okay. Um, we're going to make this, we're going to create a topic while we're here called uh, in writing assignment. 
okay? And we are going to, remember this, this little button over here, we can assign it, schedule it, or draft it. I'm going to go ahead and assign. For those of you that are in the class, you can go in and look at that. Takes a little time. because It took that much time because it was making a copy for every single student in the class. Okay. Um, if it won't let you go, yeah, you're, this is on the pub. For those of you that aren't able to join the class, you are experiencing that share thing. So Lois, now you know you can't share with students on the pub or you can't join a class that's on the pub there. You can't join a class that's on the pub. You still might be able to share with students on the pub though because a teacher is at a higher level than a student. All right. So now we have a simple assignment right here. If anybody goes there, like Winky Woohoo, doo -doo 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 -doo. here we go. Uh, I'm going to go to the writing assignment topic. Notice as a student that when I hit writing assigns, I only see the writing assignments. If I hit class materials, I only see class materials. If I want to see all topics, I see all the topics with and the assignments within. So this is a way to organize. And I believe the teacher, Debbie, help me out here. Can the teacher organize the topics? Yes, the teacher can. So if I want the writing assignments to go down, I answer my own question. Thank you, Debbie. Um, if I wanted the writing assignments to go down in the list, then I could organize it that way. And there you see, Winky Woohoo's just uh, updated. Okay, here's that simple assignment. I'm going to go and I'm going to open it. I'm a student now, so I'm going to open it. I'm a dedicated student. I'm going to type my name below, if I can remember, who to Winky. And I'm going to bold it. No, I'm not, because I didn't read that. Maybe I didn't read it. Maybe I don't want to bear it. I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. OK. And then I'm going to share. No, I don't want to share. Done. I'm going to turn in. This only appears when you're on a Google Classroom. Turn in. It's next to the share button. So as soon as I type in my name and follow the instructions to the best of my ability, I am going to turn this in. And it gives me this little thing, that just some information. Turn in work. Are you sure you want to turn it in? Because maybe, maybe, oh, maybe I forgot to do something. Eh, nah, I'm going to turn it in. Boom. All right, so I've turned in some stuff. Okay. Um, and it looks like Lois might have and Jean might have as well because they put in some comments. All right. So this is student. Yes, student can see comments because teacher allowed it. If teacher wants to turn that off at any time, teacher can. Teacher does most of that from the, um, here we go, <laughs> I have to be my teacher again. Teacher will do those settings within the settings gear. So when you're playing this weekend, go to the settings gear, look at the options after you um, create your class, see what, what you can do there. Um, go to the little hamburger here or the three lines, okay? Look at the settings option, all right? I also want you to go to your classes dashboard and maybe create a class and then try to delete it. Because we had that question come up earlier. So right here, here's a class that I can move, but I can't do anything and I can unenroll because I am enrolled in as a, a co-teacher. So I can't touch anybody else's class if someone's enrolled me in a co as a co-teacher. Uh, I'm gonna go to this class. I can move, edit, copy, or archive, so you can play around with that. While we're here, what the heck, we'll just go ahead and archive this class. Yes, I want to archive it. It disappears from my dashboard. Play with that. How do you get archived classes back, or how do you delete them? You have to archive them first. Click on that, the, the hamburger or the settings. Go to archived classes. Okay. Here is that class that I just archived, and now I can delete it. You cannot delete until you archive. And actually, I don't want to do either. I want to restore. 
boom. And then it shall come back into my classes dashboard. There it is, on and off, okay? How do you get the create option? Okay, as a teacher, we're gonna go into a class. We're going to go to the classwork tab and there's the create button right up at the top. When you hit create, you're given the options of assignment, quiz assignment, which will automat automatically do a form for you that Debbie's gonna do that on Monday. <laughs> um, and you can also create topics here, add materials, okay? Uh, this weekend, when you're creating your class, do some topics. Do some topics. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make that required. Your class has to have some topics. Now, do I have control over that or not? No, of course not. <laughs> but do it. You'll understand why uh, when, you, when you start working with the classroom. I'm gonna click on Google Calendar, by the way, because I wanted you to see something. Um, Google automatically created a calendar for me where all the assignments are listed. I will see this as a student as well. Google Classroom creates a calendar and puts all the assignment due dates on it. If you don't have a due date, it's not, it's not going to appear. Because right now, syllabus, I created it today, but it's not here in the calendar because I didn't have a due date. So that's one way to get to the calendar with the, uh, the classroom. Another way to get or to find out what's uh, due is um, this appears on your student stream and your teacher stream, you'll have upcoming. Now the teachers get a few little more bells and whistles because they'll see whether or not things are um, due or ready to grade, okay? Uh, grades, again, I told you I wasn't gonna go over this, but I will show you this. We have a lot of assignments that have been turned in and now, I could actually grade them right here. Or I could select Alan's name. I could see everything that he's turned in so far. So how did I get there? I went to grades and here's all the students. Here's what they've been doing. If I click on a student's name, then I will see what they have turned in. Okay, again, We'll be going over this Monday. Um, Eric, there's the class code right there. So if it tells you anything like you're not able to join this class because you're on a club, you're not gonna be able to, okay? If you are teaching very low ESL students, you want to make things as simple as possible, as less clicks as possible. You want to give them instructions and descriptions every step of the way and make them simple, okay? Um, and I'm sure Debbie will have some ideas and we'll probably have some other teachers that have some ideas on Monday that will be here to help you with that. Can you move a document form sheet from Drive to the classroom? Absolutely. So if you already have a form ready to rock and roll, I'm going to, as a teacher, I'm gonna to go to classwork I'm going to hit create. I'm going to select assignment. And I'm going to add. So this little attachment, we're actually adding from the Google Drive. And then I have to find it. Okay, so if I don't know what the form's name is, or I can't remember what the form's name is, I could do a search for Da, 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 da. Oh, it's not going to be search forms, really? Um, 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 um. Trying to remember what I have here. We, no. Class info. Okay, so I have a class info form. I have no idea what's on it. So I'm going to assign that. Okay. Um, again, to all students, or since I have students now, I could deselect the all students button. And I could just choose one person. So Jacqueline Cisneros, there you go. You were asking the question, I'm gonna give it to you. You're the only one that's gonna see this assignment because I just assigned it to you. I could assign points. Maybe it's a makeup work. Um, 
I'm going to make the due date today. Time. So you get, get some time to work on it. I have no idea what's on there. Uh, we're going to just leave it with no topic and title. Um, class info. Fill out. <laughs> okay. And assign. Boom. So now the rest of you can look. But class info is only going to go to um, Jacqueline. How do you organize classwork by unit and by topic, such as vocabulary? So there's a lot of different ways. Again, you're going to have to think out of the box here. So go to topics or, um, I'm sorry, create and then topic. So you go to topic and maybe we have unit one. Add. And then unit one appears. And then we go to create, topic. Unit two. Add. And maybe you have a unit within a unit that you want done. So we're going to create topic unit 1A. It will not ha let you have the same topic twice. I'm going to hit add again. You notice every time I s click or add anything to the classroom, it appears in the order that I created it. So if I want this to move up, class, there we go. So I've got unit one, then unit 1A, then unit two. So that's the way it will also appear for the students. Okay. This oh. will be a video and uh, we are going to be, <laughs> we have to close caption everything. I'm going to stop sharing. Melinda, we have a question. Oh, it's really? actually the same question twice. Same they want to know how to um, upload a PowerPoint or a, um, anything from their drive into classroom. I told them I would demonstrate it on Monday. There you go. Very good. Very good. So yeah, you can put anything in your drive that you want. Um, just as a precursor, I'm going to go to the classroom drive. I can actually drag an entire folder of information from my desktop and put it right here into this classroom folder if I wanted to. Will the students see it? No, because I haven't assigned anything out of it yet. Okay, so if I let it go, that whole folder of information, there's 11 files in there that are starting to upload into the Google Classroom folder, which is in Drive. And when I'm ready, um, I will assign things out of it as a teacher. We have a question about the, uh, the attendance. So on that Google Sheet, if anybody fills out that form tomorrow, then tomorrow's date will appear on the sheet. So this will just be a long running list of attendance. You can also turn off a form and turn it back on and so you get another worksheet. Uh, again, that's a whole nother class. Kind of winding down, I think. Debbie, is there anything that you can think of that's on the basic end that I haven't covered yet? I've been going fast and furious and I'm looking at my notes. I think I got everything that I, we talked about. I, I think you got it. We've got people that say that they feel that it's very complicated and I just want people to know it's simple. It I got to promise you, Google is simple. She, because Melinda knows Google, she tells <laughs> you complete answers. She tells you the encyclopedia answer. <laughs> Come back on Monday. We will talk Dr. Zeus because that's the level I'm at. But I use this all the time. It's simple. And I, I can show you that on Monday, I promise. I love that explanation. Thank you. <laughs> I do. I get the entire encyclopedia. I apologize because I want you to have all the information. Um, and it's going to be in a video. We are videotaping this. We have to close caption it, though. Uh, if you have, we, does anybody have any other questions while I'm here, either as a student or as a teacher? Oh, collect emails. Because if you, if you collect email addresses, they have to be signed in. And if you're on a club, sometimes they have to be signed in with their club account. And if your students don't have a club account, they can't sign in to do the form. So I always tell everybody, mm, don't do that. Um, if 
Yeah, you can, re you can require them to enter their own email address, but email collection is something different on a Google uh, form. So it, especially if you're on a club already. So that's why I tell people to shy away from that. Don't enable it. Go ahead and have an email address. I did on that sheet. You know, you were all required to enter your email addresses. So you can do it that way. Just don't require it using the Google enable form collection. Okay. I just did it a different way. And it's actually more shareable or more usable the way that I did it. So I think that answers your question, Charlotte. If not, send me an email. Um, let me go back to the handout because a lot of you were asking right from the beginning, how do I get this? I want this handout. Okay, here we go. I think, nope, that's not it. Here we go. This is the preview that you were all given, right? I have to find that link. Hang on just a sec, folks. Bear with me. It's this one. What did I do? Where did it go? I thought I put it on here. Hang on. We're going to do it right now. Okay, I'm going to share this. We're going to get shareable link. Done. I'm going to go to bit.ly. Bitly.com. It's where you can shorten URLs. It's very cool. I'm going to hit create. No, I'm not going to show you how to do this before anybody asks. I'm pasting in the long URL. Then the back half, I'm going to make it something else. So go class. Let's see if it'll let me have that. Go class. Nope. It's already taken. Glue class, glue class, root. No, it's not going to let me have that either. Two. Glue class two. There we go. Glue class two. Copy. So I'm going to put that on the handout. Hang on just a sec. We're going to put this at the beginning. Bear with me. I need to find. There it is. Boom. And we're going to paste. There it is. So I'm going to make this really big. Yes, I even make noise when I'm sitting by myself. All right, so there's the bit.ly. Yes, the G and the C are capital. So it's bit.ly slash goo class two. And if you do that, I see people there already. Look at that. We got anonymous koala and anonymous chameleon. So you're all coming in. Now, as you come in, you can go to file, make a copy, entire presentation. So as you come in, you're going to go to bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash goo class two. B-I-T dot L-Y slash goo class two. Then you're going, and uh, Marjorie or Debbie, could you type that in the chat, please? Once you're here, you're going to go to file. You're going to click on the file menu right underneath the word handout, you're going to go to make a copy, and then you're going to select entire presentation. Once you do that, you can rename this anything you want. Okay, you're getting a copy of the entire slides deck to use, lose, or peruse as you wish. Remember, this is an ebook. So that when you get to the table of contents, you know that you can click a link and go directly to one of those topics. bit.ly slash goo class two. The G and the C are case sensitive. They have to be uppercase. Okay. Now at this moment, I could stop sharing. Don't freak. It's okay. You, it, you'll still be able to get to this here, okay? So I'm going to stop sharing right now so I can get back into the room with you. Whew. Yes, it works. Yay! <laughs> All right. Um, I want to upload Microsoft document into my Google Classroom, make a copy for each student. Yes, you can do that. And again, Debbie said she'll go over that to um, go over that 
as well. Marin, you can avoid making millions of Google Forms. Uh, just use one and then you're going to have to filter them out. And I can show you how to filter. If you come to a, an office hours, you can fil filter by uh, class designation. So on that form, that attendance form, if you want to use it for three different classes, ESL1, ESL2, and geography, then you have that as part of the form. Ask them, what class are you here for? So that you can filter, when it comes into the sheet, you can filter and look for just your geography students. Can you review the class assignment attendance? People are adding in comments, not opening form. Please explain. Can you review class assignment attendance? The attendance is a form. So I created a Google form when I was in the classroom. And I just, I, um, <laughs> hang on, <laughs> answering one question, reading another. I, I added name and email address. So you can add anything you want to that form. And then I went back to classroom and it was there waiting for me to assign to the students. Elizabeth, when you open the, the, um, the bit.ly, bit.ly slash goo class two, you go there, you should be able to select the file menu and then make a copy. So it's file, make a copy. I went to Google Classroom and found I had already had a class and could not create a new class tab on the page before. Okay, um, not quite understanding that question. Uh, I went to the Google Classroom and found I already had a class, okay. Could not find a create new class tab. Oh, it's not a tab, it's a plus sign. Francis, in the top right hand corner, you're gonna see a plus sign. And then you can create a new class. Where do you look as a teacher for turned in assignments? Go to classwork. You'll see it there. You'll also see it in the grades tab. Dominique, I tried giving each student a copy of the document, but the option was not there. Well, it depends on how you, what kind of an assignment it was. So if it's a material, everyone's going to get it. If it's an assignment, then you can assign it to specific students, but only if you have uh, a class, okay? Otherwise, it's just going to go to everybody. Melinda, did you address this? Can you review the class assignment attendance? People are adding in comments, not opening form. Please explain. I think I did that already. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how can I copy a class? You would go to the more button. And I, you know, I didn't actually uh, go over that a whole bunch. So I'm going to hit the share. Um, again, you guys can keep downloading that if you wish. I'm going to go back to classroom.google.com. Here we go. Here are all my classes. This is a class dashboard. Here's the plus sign where you want to add another class. And the more button is right here. Now, depending on your class card, what color it is, it's a little easier to see on this one than it is over here for me anyway. So I'm going to click this. And now I can copy the class. Can you do subtopics? No. I wish you could, Susan. <laughs> I wish you could. Sharon, I have another meeting. Got to go. Okay. See you on Monday. Um, and on that note, uh, it, it, for those of you that are copying, remember to come back in to the chat because we need to take attendance again. Um, you have the code, but don't know where to click to join. So you have the code. So you go to classroom.google.com, Eric. And you hit the plus sign, and instead of creating a class, you're going to join a class, and that's where you put the code in. All right, in the chat, I need everyone to type in their name and their, uh, their program or their district. Can students work on an assignment on their phones? They can. They may be prompted to install Google Docs, Sheets, or Slides, which are free apps if the assignment is on a Docs Sheet or Slide. Um, as far as it being a Microsoft product, probably still, yes, but they would need to have the app in order to do it. This has been fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, remember, chats uh, like that go in the, the, um, the chat. <laughs> this is just for questions on the Q&A. Uh, so I should use a Yahoo email to join Google Classroom for teacher. Okay. Jean, uh, Jean Damone, um, 
and if I'm saying your name wrong, I apologize. You actually want to use a Google or a Gmail. That's first choice. Always use a Gmail. If you don't want a Gmail or if your, your teacher friend doesn't want a Gmail, then they can use their Yahoo. Okay. So it's always, always opt for the same um, app that's in the same sandbox just to make sure everything works fluidly. Okay. Uh, what is my class window from OTAN displaying very dark and won't let me do anything? Oh, the one that Melinda created. Well, it might be that it's gotten so much use that it needs to refresh, Martha. So try the refresh button. And if that doesn't work, try being a little more patient. And uh, maybe in a couple hours, it'll be fine. Okay. <laughs> it's the internet. Uh, sorry, but after this session is done, can you send an email link to the ebook? Elizabeth, yeah, we'll, I will try and do that. Um, I'm writing Elizabeth. We've got your email, so we'll do that for you. I'll send you the link. Is there time to sign up for Monday's class? Yes, you can sign up for all of the OTAN workshops up to the time that it starts, and actually even beyond that. We're extending it like uh, half an hour into the class. So if you, oh, I forgot to sign up, you can go and click on the link, um, then register for it, and then you'll get the, the Zoom link. Do all students see the emails? No, only the teacher sees the email. Actually, I'm going to preface that with, if you've allowed them to communicate with one another, they might, yes. Does the attendance form, where's the attendance form I need to log into? If you're talking about what's on my class, then it should be in the assignments list. If you're talking about what you're creating for your class, then it would, the form is living in your drive. And that's anonymous. I, I don't know if I answered that question or not. Uh, if students want to comment, that's up to you, Lois. You allow comments or not. For my school, set up Google Classroom for me. This would allow students with many different kinds of emails. Would you still recommend that all students get a Gmail? I always recommend that people get a Gmail first, but if they already have a Yahoo, then let them uh, use the Yahoo, but they will still have to create that Google account. Okay? People confuse Gmail with, with being... Um, uh, no, it's not a confusion. It's just that if they create an account with Yahoo, they have a Google account, but they're using their Yahoo email address. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain that. I'm going to have to think of another way. Uh, can you post all assignments for us due on Monday? Sure. I might even add a few for those of you that did it. Uh, Bitly, yes. Can we, can I, copies dimmed. I'm going to stop sharing here so I can see the chat. Um, how do I get it into save? I don't know what you're trying to save, Susan. When I click the plus, I don't get the create option. How do I get it? Wow. Uh, when you click the plus sign, you should definitely get the create or the join option. If you don't get a create option, it means you're a student, not a teacher. So that could mean that you're in a club, Ellen. Jesus, yes, I will do that. And so you can email students independently or group on the classroom. Yes. For attendance, you would have to create a new attendance form for each day. No. So you create one attendance form and you just use that same form for every class and every day. And there's a way to filter. And remember, you didn't put in a date and a time but I knew exactly when you signed in to a form because Google stamps it. Google puts a date and a time form on it. 